Pennsylvania's state system of higher education, 14 universities, infinite opportunities. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, Chancellor of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, and welcome to another installment of Infinite Opportunities. This is our systems opportunity to talk to you, the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, about how proud we are of our 14 public universities scattered all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and 100,000 students providing a great opportunity to the future of the Commonwealth along with a great faculty, staff, and administration. Today's topic is education. We're going to talk a little bit with some experts about the issue of teacher preparation and how our system is dealing with the preparation of teachers who will be teaching the students of the 21st century. With us today, we have three very important panelists. To my uh, right, first, is Dr. Susan Rimby. Uh, Dr. Rimby is the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Education at Lock Haven University. Welcome, Susan. Also with us to my left, Dr. Charlton Wolfgang, who is an assistant professor of gifted education at Millersville University. And a good friend of his joined <laughs> us today, one of our students, Brooke Kiefer. Brooke is a junior majoring in early childhood education as well as special education. And as again, I mentioned, she is also at Millersville University. Welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today on Infinite Opportunities. Uh, Dr. Rimby, I'm gonna start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about your entree into the world of teacher preparation? Well, I was an education major, secondary ed uh, social studies at Bloomsburg University. While I was teaching at one of our Pennsylvania school districts, Governor Mifflin, I have, was a cooperating teacher for Kutztown University student teachers. At Shippensburg University, I taught social studies, secondary education, supervised uh, student teachers. And now at Lock Haven, I oversee our teacher education preparation program. Fantastic. I'm a uh, product of a school of education at the University of Cincinnati in elementary education, and I know what a great start that gave me in the world of teaching elementary school children. Uh, let's go to Dr. Wolfgang, uh, your entree. Well, it's kind of a long, convoluted story. I uh, started off as a biology major out of college and then decided I wanted to go back and get my secondary certification in biology. So I taught for 17 years in a middle school three years life science, 15 years in gifted, and uh, two years high school biology. And then uh, went on to get my doctorate in educational leadership and um, learning technologies, and worked for the IU as a STEM consultant, and then came to Millersville University a year and a half ago, and joined the early, middle, and exceptional education department there. Great resume. Thank you. For preparation purposes. <laughs> and uh, Brooke, uh, Congratulations on having Thank selected you. education as a major. And when did you decide you wanted to go into education? Well, my story is not as long as Dr. <laughs> Wolfgang's, but... It um, will be one day. It, yeah, hopefully one day. Um, I've wanted to be a teacher ever since elementary school, you know. I always loved playing teacher with all my friends, and I had so many teachers that, you know, just inspired me through elementary school, especially middle school. And I also have family that are teachers, my aunt and my cousin. Um, so it's always been in the family, and... It's just I want to inspire students like my teachers inspired me. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, listen, as, a, as another <laughs> educator to educator, I'm very excited about your future. Thank you. This is a I great do. opportunity having you introduce one another to uh, see what's going on out there at another one of our universities that engages in teacher preparation. So we're going to go out on a little bit of a field trip to Slippery Rock University and see how they're handling the issue of 21st century teacher preparation at Slippery Rock. I was three and my whole life changed. Um, my brother was born and he had physical and um, developmental um, disabilities. He basically flipped our whole world upside down and he taught us more things imaginable. In high school sometime, we walked into the grocery store and I remember he had an absolute meltdown. He was um, pushing over displays, running through, screaming really inappropriate terms. Um, and people were just staring at us and I remember them talking about us and this is when I knew that I wanted to make a change in the community and it was going to be about special ed. This degree in special education is an education doctorate in special education. Uh, we are one of the, the few programs in the state that offer an education doctorate in special education. Um, so it really is looking at persons with disabilities from birth through adulthood 
and finding a way to meet the needs as they um, grow through uh, early childhood to school age to the transition into adult life. I decided to pursue my doctoral degree way back when I was five years old. I was in first grade and I had a student teacher named Miss Hunt and she came to my first grade classroom and I asked who was watching her that day and she said that was my professor from Silver Rock University and I told her I wanted that job. I believe that um, when you do pursue something like this and it's actually coming true, um, that dream from five years old, I thought this, this is the place I need to be. Slippery Rock has a, a story tradition in special education. Um, we work closely with local schools, local programming, as well as the resources that are available here on campus. We do a lot of outreach um, to communities, to schools. We also have a sensory lab that um, we use for mainly students with autism. We have always been known for special education. We were um, leaders in the field and to watch us grow from really an undergraduate program to now a national and international recognized program at the master's level and the doctoral level has, has been uh, an honor to be a part of. I have grown so much in six years that I never thought it would be possible. Because of the faculty here at Slippery Rock that I've kind of gotten this push and um, this kind of fire in me. I'm so proud of myself that I've come here you know, this far, but I really have to give it to the faculty. They are top-notch <laughs> and I almost get emotional because they have had um, such an influence. I think it's life-changing for them to watch them realize the impact that they're going to be able to make. And the special ed department has been unbelievable. I would definitely encourage anyone and even give them a tour if they'd like. Invest in me. 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 I'll be your future public servant. I'll be your future advertising executive. I'll be your future accountant. I will be your future motivational speaker. I'll be your future lawmaker. I will be your future teacher. Invest in me. I'll be your future videographer. Welcome back, and I'd like to take just an opportunity to reintroduce our panel members because we're so delighted they're joining us today. From Lock Haven University, Dr. Susan Rimby is the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Education there. Brooke Kiefer is our student today. She's a junior from Millersville University, majoring in early childhood education and special education. And Dr. Charles Wolfgang is Assistant Professor of Gifted Education at Millersville University. Thank you all again for joining us. Uh, when I went to a college of education decades ago, things were different than they are today as we work to prepare the students of the 21st century. Even though we've already started that century, things are changing faster than sometimes we have the ability to keep up with in education. To that end, preparing teachers then has begun to change rather dramatically. So I'd like to spend just a minute with our viewers covering some of the changes that are taking place and why they are necessary. And Dr. Wolfgang, I thought we'd start with you on that one. Okay, and that is an excellent point. Uh, technology is where we're seeing a lot of the changes. Some of my background was as a technology coach, and so a lot of the, uh, the courses that we teach, we integrate technology within um, our coursework. And the challenge with technology, as you can imagine, is that it's changing so rapidly that we can introduce students to a new you know, app or website, but then six months later it's upgraded, there's a new one that's taking its place. So what we try to do is take a little bit broader view and uh, really focus on the skills that are integrated within those different types of technology and helping our students to understand 
how students are using that technology then in their learning. So we try to leverage the technology rather than just using the technology for itself, leveraging that technology to prepare them for this 21st century, utilizing those 21st century skills that we've all heard about. And it is a moving target, isn't it? It certainly uh, the, is. This world of technology. <laughs> Brooke, you grew up uh, with the explosion of technology, but even you, I guess, can see the way it changes at such a fast oh, yeah. pace and trying to integrate that into the education mm -hmm. of our children. How are you adapting to all of that as you uh, practice uh, in preparation <laughs> for your own classroom someday? Well, I definitely saw the technology bloom because I remember in elementary school they would bring out, you know, the TV on the rolling stand and it was like, it was awesome. It was our best day. And then in high school, we got our smart boards for the first time in eighth grade, ninth grade, you know, that's when they really started to use them, but they didn't really work very well. And so it was definitely interesting to see how it changed because what I'm learning in college now is kind of different than what... I saw my teachers do in elementary school and middle school because there is different technology now. And I think it is important to show teachers the tools that they have with the 21st century skills that they can use in their classroom with like websites and online tools. I think that's really important to use, especially with gifted students and um, special needs students. But what a great tool to be able to mm -hmm. fit the specific needs of yeah. each child. And that's one of the genius uses of technology mm -hmm. if used appropriately and harnessed is the power to adapt to each child individually. Yeah. You've seen no changes in classroom instruction, Susan, <laughs> uh, during your time in higher education, I trust, but uh, can you weigh in on this one well, a little I bit? I can. Uh, my discipline, as I said earlier, was social studies education, and this technology is a boon for social studies teachers. I used to talk about what was in the li Library of Congress. Teachers today can take students virtually to the mm -hmm. Library of Congress. I used to have to put students on a, 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 a bus when gas prices in the 70s and 80s were, were comparatively very high, now you can take that field trip virtually. Mm -hmm. And what I learned from my students and my faculty at Lock Haven University that there is an app for everything. <laughs> uh, we, you know, a few years ago I said to the faculty, we need to make sure we have enough iPads for our students during student teaching. They said, Susan, they're downloading what they need on their phones. There's even an app for classroom management that our middle level education man uh, majors have found very helpful. Well, those of us who have jobs sometimes wonder if we're going to be the victim of that and hear, hey, there's an app for you. Um, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go take another field trip, uh, appropriately so, uh, to Lock Haven University. So we're taking you home, Dr. Rumi, to Lock Haven <laughs> University. And let's take a little look at how Lock Haven is dealing with teacher preparation. Lock Haven University prepared me for my job by giving me the opportunities and the experiences that allowed me to become comfortable in my classroom setting, that allowed me to feel confident in my abilities of becoming a teacher. I think one of the biggest advantages uh, for the education program at Lock Haven University is that we really provide students the opportunity to get out into the classrooms. A lot of times we try to provide that opportunity for the students first semester freshmen, get out into the classroom, start seeing what is it like to be an educator. We give them many, many hours before they get into student teaching. They know early in their careers if here at the university if this is something that they want to do. Coming to Lock Haven really provides them the opportunity to get out into a variety of different special education classrooms. They're required to get out to autistic support classrooms, emotional support classrooms, life skills classrooms, learning support classrooms. They really have the opportunity to see all the disabilities that are out there and how to teach children with special needs and provide them with the strategies that help them to reach their fullest potential. Society is ever-changing and the demands on teachers are greater than ever and we need to really provide our children with the best teachers that we can. Here at Lock Haven we have a lot of school districts that will call and request specific graduates in our teacher education program because they are desperate for positions and they know the quality teachers that we provide here and that we uh, send out into the schools. Motivation is um, one of the 
key things that was modeled at Lock Haven University as we went through the teaching program. Our professors were very energetic and motivating as role models. If you're not motivated, they're not going to be motivated, therefore they're not going to learn. Motivation is key. So we try to find the best students to come into the teacher education program. They have to be very bright, but they also have to be very, very compassionate. It is very important for us to have people that can grow and change as education changes. We need to pro provide education to our children because education helps them to get out of poverty and helps people to be healthy and to make choices. So we must educate children in order to have great citizens. In 1934, 22 people started a financial cooperative. PSECU was born out of necessity, out of a need to provide service to people who needed it most. Since 2000, we've been forging strong relationships with educational partners across Pennsylvania, making strategic investments that benefit all members, including students, faculty, and staff, and alumni at over 20 university and college locations across Pennsylvania. Learn more about what we offer students at PSECU.com slash students. Welcome back. And today's topic, of course, is education, but more specifically, how our system is helping to prepare the next generation of classroom teachers for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and beyond. We're really delighted again to have one of our students with us today from Millersville University. And uh, Brooke, we've been talking a little bit about the preparation of mm -hmm. teachers, and I think sometimes our viewers wonder, how do we prepare teachers for the classroom? And there are two really, uh, two elements to it. One is yeah. the preparation in your classrooms at Millersville, Un Millersville University with great faculty, but also the experiential side where you actually go into schools uh, and have on the ground training opportunities. You've done part of that experience as yeah. a freshman and yet another part of it awaits you. Can you tell us about those two? Yeah, so um, as a freshman, my first semester, I did go right out into the field. It was 40 hours that we had to observe a class. Um, there was no teaching involved for our side. It was mainly just observing the practices that that teacher used in their classroom. And I also have been in the field my sophomore year and also this year for my gifted class with Dr. Wolfgang. Um, and it is really helpful because you are able to observe the good and the bad, you know, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And of course, student teaching, you know, the big elephant in the room, oh, I'm so nervous for that. But that will await me my senior year. And it's really helpful because we learn about the practices in our classroom at Millersville, and then we can implement them in the general ed classrooms. And it is helpful because you see what works and what doesn't work, and it's definitely a good experience to get out there early. And of course, Dr. Rimby, um, mm -hmm. the experience on the student practicum side is a full semester, yes? That's correct. You want to zero in on that a little bit? Yes, yes. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania requires a minimum of 12 weeks of student teaching. In the state system of higher education in Pennsylvania, typically student teaching is 14 to 15 weeks. So we feel our students are very well prepared uh, to be um, teachers of record because they have that little extra practice. Typically, uh, students do two seven and a half to eight week placements. In secondary, for example, where I have my most expertise, students will do seven and a half weeks to eight weeks in a middle school and then the same in a high school. In a pre-K-4 situation, uh, students would do half a, uh, half a semester's placement with a very early grade. A pre-K, uh, a licensed daycare center, uh, a first or second grade classroom, and then another uh, placement in an upper uh, third or fourth grade classroom. For middle level, they spend one placement in a uh, self-contained fifth or sixth grade classroom and then one placement in a middle school. For students who are getting dual certification in special education, they'll spend one placement in a regular ed classroom and one placement in a special education classroom. So they have a uh, both a breadth and depth of experience. That's really very thoughtfully packaged yes, to make is. sure that it is a breadth and depth of experience. Dr. Wolfgang, uh, what becomes the faculty role 
when the student moves out into those classrooms? Uh, is it a guide on the side, a coach? Uh, because they will be working with a full-time practicing teacher when they're in that student teaching experience. Mm -hmm. What then becomes the role of the Millersville faculty for, uh, in this case, Brooke, when she does that? Well, I actually have been a student teacher supervisor all three of the semesters that I've been at Millersville, so I can speak specifically to that role. Mm -hmm. And our, we go into the classroom and observe a minimum of six times throughout the semester. We have an initial meeting, a midterm meeting, and then a final meeting as well with the student as well as with the cooperating teacher. And we're the liaison between the university and the student as well as the cooperating teacher. So you know, we're making sure that we're talking about uh, what they're working on, lesson plan development, any issues that might arise, uh, all of those kinds of things. So it's a, very, it's a coaching kind of role uh, and probably the most, I think, the the best aspect of it from my perspective is just watching that growth from the beginning of the semester to the end. It's just so I, much fun. I remember my own student teaching experience and the relationship with my practicing teacher but also with my mm -hmm. faculty member who worked with me and the growth that I felt mm -hmm. during that one semester which was very, very difficult to describe to others but I knew it yeah. was happening. I could feel it happening. Let's go out and take another trip. Let's go to East Stroudsburg University which has a great uh, education program and see what they're doing at East Stroudsburg. Being in the classroom and actually being able to work with them one-on-one -on -one and help them understand the content that they're learning is just, it's unbelievable. I think what makes the professional development school so meaningful for our candidates is the time uh, that they spend out in the field. The professional development school model differs uniquely from student teaching because it starts the student much earlier than student teaching and it allows the student to scaffold their information and their work and their performance before they would end up in student teaching. Students who go through the PDS program have so much more hands-on experience before they ever start their placement for student teaching. Often by the end of that um, placement with you, they um, are very grateful that in their back pocket they have already all of that experience that you've shared with them as far as lesson planning and classroom management and behavior management. Um, so often they leave feeling pretty confident that they're ready to have a classroom of their own. Tyler? Yes, it is the outer court. The professional development program prepared me for student teaching because I had uh, great opportunities to be in the field and work with the children, basically prepare me to become a teacher. The partnership between ESU and our school district is great because we give the student teachers and the students that have been through the PDS program um, something that ESU cannot give them. It gives them that real world experience, situations that they have not been able to encounter over in a classroom at ESU. And I do notice that the, those who have been through the PDS program often come with a greater understanding of depth in regards to the questions that are asked for them. Prior to coming to East Stroudsburg University, I was a middle school principal for years and I used to go to great length to hire the really best candidates and it always amazed me that the East Stroudsburg University students were always in the mix. They were winning the interviews, they were making the final. Because they return to various placements and that's all designed, they get to develop greater skills. The partnership with ESU is beneficial to um, the school district, it's beneficial to the classroom teacher, it's beneficial to the university. The students in the classroom, hopefully from the time that the PDS student arrives, even for in an observational um, class, that they see that person as a teacher. The PDS program has a lot of great effects on the students in my classroom. As the PDS student semester ends, the students in the classroom that they've been working with as they leave as a student teacher, they form such great bonds with these PDS students or student teachers over the semesters that they've been with them that it's often very hard for the students in the classroom to say goodbye. I've had students, you know, almost in tears as their student teachers leave on the last day because it's apparent the impact that they've had on their learning. Welcome back. And we're talking about education today and specifically teacher preparation. And of course, we live in a brave new world. Uh, to think when I was young and watched Star Trek that many of the things that they actually did are now coming to pass is fairly <laughs> remarkable. Some of the challenges that brings, though, to teacher preparation are pretty obvious. How do you prepare young people 
for a vastly different th world than even the ones that we inherited when we were young. So, uh, Dr. Rimby, how do you evaluate the what goes on in, in the programs of educational preparation at your institution? Well, we have a very um, robust accreditation process. We file annual reports with the Pennsylvania Department of Education. Um, we also are nationally accredited by the Council of Accreditation of Education Preparation. We've just been reaccredited by them until 2023. But we don't rest on our laurels in between those visits. Uh, we do, a, I think, a rigorous a job, job of looking at what our students are doing, how prepared are they, how satisfied are the cooperating teachers and the principals, what do we need to constantly tweak in our teacher education programs so that we're preparing our students for a world that is going to be technologically challenging, more diverse, smaller. How do we... Um, train teachers who are able to educate every child. Um, next month, in about, in fact, actually in about a week and a half, I'll have a, a council teacher education meeting, and one of the things we'll look at is some of our assessments to see are students making the grade, and if not, what do we need to do differently? Mm. And Dr. Wolfgang, uh, drawing aspiring teachers, talented, bright teachers, uh, with the myriad uh, opportunities that people now have as they pass through college is getting harder and harder. Uh, how does Millerville, Millersville deal with that? Well, that is a challenge, and you're, you're definitely correct. Uh, we have a number of open houses throughout the year where we invite students and, and parents uh, to come and check out our programs. We do a presentation on what we have to offer and uh, some of the unique and innovative programs that we do offer, such as our STEM minor, which I also teach in, uh, it really is attracting Science, some technology, engineering, engineering and math. math. Exactly. Uh, so that's a minor uh, open to a lot of our students. So that's been uh, a nice attractive piece. Our gifted program and uh, the gifted coursework that we're offering uh, went from 11 students to 26 to 30. And now this coming semester, we have 43 students that are signed up for the course. So trying to bring in innovative programs, anticipating what the future needs might be, and just really showing our students you know, what value there is in being an educator and how exciting of a career this can be. And Brooke, this is not meant to be a loaded question, but do you feel as a student that you're being prepared along the way to walk into that first classroom with that certificate in your hand and say, yes. I'm your teacher? Yes, I, I really do. I think all of my professors that I've had at Millersville have really adopted, you know, the 21st century skills and technology and they're innovative and they're, you know, teaching us new ways to help all the individual students and I do. I do feel prepared. I'm, I'm ready. Well, Dr. Maybe not yet, but soon. <laughs> I will be ready. She will be. Dr. Wolfgang, Dr. Rimby, and of course our, our special student with us today, Brooke Kiefer, thank you for being our panelists today on what is an incredibly important topic for the future of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and all of us. And to our viewers, as always, thanks for taking time from your schedule to join us on yet another installment of Infinite Opportunities. I'm Frank Brogan. We hope to see you again. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online.